Hey, what's up? How we doing? Hey, just before we get going, um, I hate that I exist. I am super fucking hungover right now, but I gotta make this video. Or at least the intro part to it, you know what I mean? We're back! We're back! Alright, we're starting on the Paragon of Man, Smoky Fairy Tales Part 3! Just wanna thank everybody for hanging out. We got some good stuff coming up in this book. Oh my god. And we're gonna be back doing the thing where we're doing a chapter a week as we go forward. I think this book should take us to August sometime. Maybe July. But anyway, it'll be on Audible. Wait, no. Yeah, no, no. It'll be on Audible sooner than later, hopefully. In the next week or two, if you don't want to wait for the chapters. And of course, this whole thing is already up on Patreon. We're way ahead over there. And, and I put these chapters up on Patreon as soon as I get done with them, as opposed to, you know, being on a scheduled thing here. Oh, my God. But yeah, that's, that's where we're at today. All right. Enjoy the chapter. The Paragon of Man, Smoke Pit Fairy Tales, Part 3. Chapter 1. The Last Days of Ilium. Orders never came. Weeks passed without a shot fired. The first flurries of Frost's fingers fluttered in the light of the flames. The air was cold, but not so cold to touch my bones. Doc, De La Garza, Correa, and I sat around a fire next to the tarmac. And so it begins. I looked to the sky. Besides a few marines and their fires, there was no observable light in any direction of the horizon. The sky was black. Thick clouds covered the heavens across the horizons. The sun, moon, and the stars hadn't been seen since the city fell. Remember when I told you guys invading Russia in the spring was a bad idea because we'd be here until winter? Doc stirred. Because we're here, in the winter. Do you think that that's what Ivan's waiting for? I kept my eyes fixed to the cloudy blanket of night. Us to freeze to death? Correa shook his head. I doubt it. We hadn't had communications with anyone outside the city in over a month. There's something bigger that has to be going on. No one? De La Garza asked. No, supposedly ships are still just past the horizon. They may have been sunk, but that doesn't explain why the sat phones ain't working. Or why we can't contact any of the adjacent units not in St. Petersburg. They probably just forgot about us. At least Ivan stocked up on chow and water so we don't starve to death through the winter. Doc stated as if he didn't care for our fate. I smirked. How, how long do you think it'll take before we have to start eating the prisoners? Have to, or do it voluntarily? Out of spite? Correa shook his head. There's less than 50 of them. They'd probably only be able to feed us for a week. Shit, the Russians haven't even sent scout teams to check on us. So it's not like there'd be more coming in for dinner. I lit a cigarette that I'd plundered from the Russians and wrapped a coat I stole from a warehouse around my body. I'm just glad they said to hell with the regs. There's no reason for it at this point. I scratched the month's worth of beard on my face. Lieutenant Toshi appeared from the darkness and sat on a crate next to us. Evening, gentlemen. Hey, sir. How's the night? Toshi rested the AK he'd been using on the crate. Same as it's been. Tomorrow, Echo Company is loading up on captured Russian trucks and heading to the MEF headquarters in Riga. We're that absent on orders? Yes. The Army, Brits, and Germans are in the same boat we are. I would have a pilot relay information for us, but the last Daedalus flew out of here last week and hasn't been seen since. The German mechs walked here, but I can't send them to one of the ships because we don't know where the damn ships are. If we did, we could probably contact them via line of sight comm, but there's nothing. The next morning, Echo Company rolled out with Ivan's trucks towards Latvia. Doc and I sat with our breakfast of watered-down, powdered-based Russian egg rations and watched the convoy creep out of Ilium's gates. So do you think that the war is over and no one bothered to tell us? I asked, struggling to get the soup-like eggs to stay on a fork. I don't know, dude. What if the world ended? Doc, the world didn't end. We're still here. Well, what if we're dead and this is purgatory? Like we got killed and now our souls are stuck here. Yeah, given our history with death and what's been going on with our bodies, I don't think we're going to die for a long time. Why did we survive that explosion in Iran that should have obliterated us? Why, why am I alive after getting shot in the lung? It, it, it's because we're stupid and we ate that shit in that dungeon in Iraq and now we're probably cursed to walk the earth as immortals, still subject to the pains of just being alive. Shit. If that's what's going on, I would have at least wanted to be cursed by a demon or a wizard and had the rules explained to me. Fuck this trying to figure out exactly what the terms and conditions of this bullshit is. What if we did die in that cave and we've just been in hell since then? I tossed the flimsy paper plate and the greenish powdered eggs. I don't fucking know, Doc. I pulled a cigarette from the inner pocket of my coat. 
it took a few strikes to spark the lighter. All I know is that this sucks, and I want to go home to my wife. You never found out where your kid was, did you? Nope. I tightened the jacket around my body. The air didn't warm up from the night before. I haven't so much as even got a letter from Penelope in over a year. Fuck, dude. No one's got any mail. Shit wasn't even that bad in World War II. Fuck. I, I just hope she hasn't moved on. Doc looked over at me. Well, this is probably going to end up being World War III. I exhaled a thick plume of smoke. Whatever it is, I'm going to run out of cigarettes soon. And that's going to be the worst part about this. Cold, bored, scared, sober, and out of smokes. The next few weeks passed the same as the month before. No contact with the outside world and no Russian visitors. Every day the temperature dropped a few more degrees and the sun, moon, and stars stayed a little more hidden behind a thick blanket of dark clouds. I was sitting by the gates with Doc when Echo Company returned. They came back with fewer trucks than they left with. That's a noticeable difference. You think they had to fight through Ivan to get there and back? Probably. Doc turned to face them as the vehicle stopped. The Marines stumbled out of their trucks. They moved as if they were disorientated, swaying in semicircles as they walked away from their vehicles. Some only exited the door to lay on the concrete. Doc and I started to walk towards the Marines. What do you think's up? I don't know, man. Echo Company wasn't wearing flak jackets or Kevlars. A Lance Corporal curled himself up next to a tire. We kneeled beside him. Ah, oh, man. I examined the Marine. His skin was red. Blisters and lesions bubbled sporadically across his flesh. What's your name, dude? <coughs> Doc asked the fetal man at our feet. <coughs> Elpis. I'm a corpsman. I'll get you taken care of. Doc rubbed Elpis's head only to have his hand return with a thick patch of the Marine's hair. Doc gave me a look of dread. Elpis started coughing. <coughs> Doc held his shoulders and rubbed his back. Bile spewed from Elpis's mouth. Hank, we gotta get him to the aid station. We lifted the Marine by his arms and made our way across the tarmac. Elvis's bile turned to blood. The vomiting was only halted by screams. We were 50 yards away from the medical building when Elvis shat himself. Brown and red fluid flooded his trousers. Elvis's body went limp. We got him inside and laid him down on a table. Doc wrapped his hand around Elvis's throat for a few seconds. He's dead. What the fuck happened to him? I stared at the man's body. I don't know. We're gonna have to find out what they saw out there. Chemical attack, maybe? The Russians have some pretty nasty shit. Yeah, but if they're willing to use it, why hasn't it been used on us? Doc shook his head and shrugged. I don't know, man. Doc? What? What if they decide to use whatever this is on us? Then we end up like him. But what about if we don't die? Doc bit his lip. Let's just hope not, Hank. We left the aid station and found Lieutenant Toshi talking to Echo Company's first sergeant. The first sergeant's eyes were sunk deep into his face. His skin, red like fire, had started peeling from his body. His voice and limbs shook. There was nothing there. Riga's a burning crater. So is every city between here and there. They blew it all up. There's nothing left. He searched for a canteen in the Alice pack he was leaning against. So, there's nothing? No one? Toshi inquired. The first sergeant took a swig of water and shook his head. He leaned back on his pack, closed his eyes, and stopped breathing. The canteen dropped. Its contents wet the ground around it. We were silent. I started to shake. Was it terror I felt, or was it hopelessness? Itching pressure built behind my eyes. My jaw shivered. I could see the pain in Toshi and Doc's faces, straight through their eyes to their souls. We're not ever going home, are we? Toshi ignored me in favor of rubbing his brow. The rest of Echo was dead within a few hours. They were buried with the rest of the Marines whose bodies were left after the fighting stopped. That night I laid in an underground hangar at the feet of Russian mechs. I stared at the cold, lifeless forms, contemplating what was to become of us. The floor was littered with sleeping Marines. How can anyone sleep? I thought to myself. The world's been destroyed. No one's going home. I looked at the legs of the Russian rook. It's not, it's like, not like we can, we can walk, walk back. back. Everyone will get poisoned. Get poisoned. Fuck, there might not even be a home to go back to. An image appeared in my mind of San Diego obliterated in a ball of nuclear fire. Then I thought of Penelope screaming as her flesh was thrown from her bones. My heart dropped through my body, all the way to the center of the earth. My breath quivered. 
I opened my Alice pack and dug for a bottle of Hesperides I had found in the galley. I popped out the cork and rested back on the foot of the rook. The touch of cold steel through my clothes was the caressing of an evil god. What if... What if Penelope's gone? I took a long drink from the bottle. No, 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 she can't be dead. I could feel it. What are you talking you talk about, Hank? You're not psychic. That's the wine talking. I argued with myself and finished the bottle in silence. I awoke to Doc, kicking my foot. My body felt like I'd have been stomped by the rook behind me. My throat was coarse, and with every heartbeat, a troll took an axe to my ocular nerve. I groaned and begrudgingly forced my eyes open. Toshi wants to talk to everybody. What? What time is it? Noonish. I had slept fully clothed. I stood up and walked with Doc to the surface. The wind blew flurries of snow, but nothing was sticking. Clouds still hid the sun. The battalion, which was now less than the size of a company, stood in a loose gaggle by the runway across from the buildings. I nodded at Fowler, Correa, and De La Garza. Lieutenant Toshi, the only officer left, called us in close. The Marines offered a low grunt. Afternoon, gentlemen. The division's leadership had a meeting this morning to discuss our situation and plans for our move forward. Intel analyzed the information. Echo Company brought back. That, combined with what the surgeons had to say about those Marines, we're pretty sure that nuclear attacks have been made against everywhere, at least as far as Latvia. As we all know, communication's been down since shortly after we captured the fortress. It's reasonable to believe the ships have been sank, and there is no one coming for us. We're going to lay here and wait for another week in the hopes of someone contacting us. And seven days from now, presuming the situation hasn't changed, us, the Army, the Brits, and the Germans are going to start journeying home. Tomorrow morning, we're going to start stripping Ilium of anything we feel valuable to take with us and load on the vehicles. The Russians do have mop gear stored in warehouses, so we will be taking that with as much food, water, ammunition, medical supplies, and fuel as we can load. Given the nature of our circumstances, helmets, body armor, PPE will not be required to bring. How are we going home, sir? Fowler asked. Given how much food we anticipate being able to haul, leadership thinks it would be best to divide up by regiment, seeing as how after a few weeks, at best, we're going to have to scavenge food for ourselves. The 7th Marine Regiment is going to push north into Finland, then across to the port city of Bergen on the west coast of Norway. Hopefully once we're there, we can get our hands on a ship and sail home. 5th Marines is going along with the Germans and Brits through the Baltic state to Germany, then England. If there's enough of an England left, they too are going to be commandeering a ship. 1st Marines is heading southeast through Russia, then Kazakhstan and Mongolia, then back north into Russia where they will cross the Bering Strait. The 82nd Airborne plans to move northeast and cross the Pole and head south through Canada. Everything we don't carry out of Ilium will be burnt. The engineers are going to place explosives throughout the fortress, and after we've left, we're blowing this fucker up like we should have done in the first place. The lieutenant stared at the Marines for a few seconds. Does anyone have anything for me? No one offered a word. All right, then. Your packing list will be left to the individual. Dismissed. Toshi disappeared towards his bivouac. I pulled out a crushed pack of Russian cigarettes and my lighter. What do you think of all that? I don't know what to think of that. That's better than hanging out here. And out of the four, we probably got the best gig. How's that? Well, 5th Marines is going through what killed Echo. So those guys will be in mop gear the whole damn time. Walking all across Asia is not going to be fun or easy. And just fuck going over the North Pole. I rolled my eyes. Sure, but we'll still have to go above the Arctic Circle to get where we're going. It's not like it's going to be any less cold. I remember when you were an optimist, Hank. When? I exhaled bitter Russian smoke. Yeah, where the fuck did that happen? Uh, Afghanistan? Ugh. Did you find anything useful to take with you? Besides cold weather and chemical warfare gear, I'm just going to pack a few small war trophies. I have a pack of chew left. I'm going to save that until we're on the move. Why don't you just eat cigarettes like the Serbot used to? I'm not that desperate. What about you two? I flicked the ash from my cigarette. Wine. Lots of wine. The Russians have crates of it down there. And cigarettes. And a Thor's hammer I took off a guy. My hatchet, K-bar, rifle, and letters. Yeah, I'm probably just going to double down on that. The final days in Ilium passed. We loaded everything that wasn't bolted to the ground into trucks and started our journey home. 
Doc, De La Garza, Fowler, Correa, and I rode in the back of a six-wheeled cargo truck stuffed with the supplies. About an hour after we set off, the convoy stopped. We dismounted and looked back at the Fortress Ilium. In an instant, the concrete and steel monstrosity flashed as bright as the sun. A column of darkness soared above it to the clouds like Satan's arm reaching to heaven from hell below. We loaded back up and continued north towards Finland, snaking around what could be loosely defined as a road. Some pavement had been crushed from battle. The highway that wasn't scarred from the war was sheeted with winter's snow and ice. We were constantly assaulted by the howling wind. We halted and slept through the nights. Only one man from every other truck stood watch. We were in no hurry and we hadn't seen another soul. The days passed quickly. A joker story might arise, but most of my time was spent blakely staring out the back of the truck or looking at photos and letters from my sweet Penelope. Thank you very much for listening to this chapter of The Paragon of Man, Smoke Pit Fairy Tales Part 3. We'll be back next week with another chapter. If you don't want to wait for these to premiere over here, these chapters are over on Patreon or, you know, the. I'll let you guys know in the Audible books on Audible, when the book audio books on Audible. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to wait for me to read these to you, I mean, you can go buy the books. You can get the War Chest. That's it's it's that little box there. I'm just putting a ma- I put a pin in the map. I'll, I'll do a whole fucking video on that right now when I'm not fucking just like depleted. Uh, but speaking of those two, hey, the furnace is on. That's great. Okay, but anyway, speaking of those two things, I want to thank everybody who's gotten a war chest, and I want to thank everybody who's following me on Patreon, and I want to thank you for sitting here and watching this whole thing. All right, I'm going to go upload this because uh, it's due today. I'll try to be sober next week. No promises. All right, here's, uh, here's, some, here's some bloopers for you. All right, Trip. we're going to see if we can knock this shit out right off the rip and figure out a good voice for De La Garza without sounding like Fonzie all over again. Um... This motherfucker only got two lines in chapter one, so I'm not going to send that to you as a separate file because that seems retarded and like a waste of time. I am sure you're smart enough to notice that's what's going on and divide the lines accordingly. However, comma, I am not sure that you are sober enough, so I'm going to warn you anyway. All right, let's do this. The Paragon of Man. Let's try this. Talking to the box trip. There's less than 50 of them. They'd probably only be able to feed us for a week. Shit, the Russians haven't uh, even... Uh, fire! Uh, the Russians haven't even seen our scout teams. <laughs> this is going to be a whole solid take. I will not be pausing for anything. This... Oh, okay. All right, so this is the exact same settings, except for the microphone is straight up. I am facing the gain sign, and it is as far back in the box as it will go. Okay? That was terrible. I don't know what to think of that. Real trap shit. The rest of Echo was dead within a few hours. They were buried with the rest of the Marines whose bodies were left after leaving... Fucking work, mouth. All right, Smoke Pick Fairy Tales, book three.